And I have a fluorescent tube here, just a normal fluorescent tube, sort of thing you've seen before. So this actually contains a small amount of mercury, the same sort of thing that Jean Picard discovered in 1675. This, with a little bit of electricity, gives out, well, it's actually mainly purpley UV light, but it can excite these phosphorescent coatings that we have on the lamps. Now, the lamp that I have on the top is rather a special one. On the end here, we have no coating at all, and you see the purpley color. This is due to the, the mercury, the UV light. And the three colors that we have here, these are the phosphorescent coatings that are used to make up the white light. So all these three coatings are mixed up together, and they, uh, we see, uh, as, see these as the brilliant white in the fluorescent tube here. So this is how the fluorescent tube works. The elements for this, if we can just look on the last slide here, um, this shows uh, some rather rare elements. We have um, cerium. If you can find cerium, oh dear. Even, oh, there we are, they're beginning to get there. Cerium, yes, indeed, over there. Here's cerium. Um, europium. It's a rather rare element there. Europium. Gadolinium. Very good. Here, and terbium. And here's terbium. They also use a bit of yttrium, which is up here. Okay, so these are all the elements that are used in producing the light that we see in fluorescent tubes. If we look at the periodic table here, half of the elements, these are elements that we've discussed in this lecture, over half of the elements in the entire periodic table uh, we've talked about in this lecture that are involved in producing light um, in various forms. Well, this just about brings me to the end of the lecture. So what have we learned? We've learned that we can convert different forms of energy into light energy, electrical energy and chemical energy.